Should the ex-wife of a man who won $273 million in the lottery get some of the jackpot? After all, during their 15-year marriage, she supported him because he didn't have a steady job. Well, now the lottery winner's ex is speaking out in an exclusive interview with our Les Trent. Zed Gambit. She's the just divorced wife whose ex husband won $273 million in the lottery. Mike Murphy wow. never had a steady job in their 15 year marriage. We had a dog, he took care of the dog. And when they divorced five months ago, she was ordered to pay him alimony. Now, at age 53, this regular Joe is mega rich, leading to all sorts of debate. What's the right thing he should do? And he should give his wife 20% after. What? 20, huh? He must be crazy. At least 15% percent I'm going to go with half. Oh, wow. wow. So the first thing here is that winning a lottery more than 200 million is just crazy. You have made it for life. You are almost close to a billionaire, one over five of a billionaire. You are a very rich man. Now, in this scenario, it's quite very interesting because the man is already divorced to the woman and owes her nothing according to the law. That's how it should be. So people making making it entitled, stating that he should give her half. The guy must be crazy because you can't give her half because she has not, no ties to you whatsoever at this moment. Because you're living your life, she's living her life separately. Well, the issue of uh, paying alimony is something else as well because if the woman is paying, paying alimony, then out of grace, she should stop maybe, but he is not entitled to let her stop. The court is not entitled because if the roles were switched and the woman won the money, the man will still continue paying because that amount that the woman had won had nothing to do with the alimony in the first place, you know. That's how it works. But in this case, you know, out of gratitude, I'm sure, or out of respect to the woman, you should have given her something, maybe a million, two million, something like that, even 10 million. Let's stretch it up there. 10 million at least she will be rich, but he won't be richer. So out of gratitude, you would do that to the woman. But in this case, it seems as though the divorce did not end well. And let's continue watching to see what transpired afterwards in this video. Now, in this exclusive interview, we're hearing from Eileen for the first time. And she tells Inside Edition she doesn't want a penny of his winnings. Your ex-husband won over $270 million. You were the breadwinner when you were married. You think you're entitled to any of that? I don't want anybody to misconstrue anything that I'm coming after him because I've heard this from numerous places that I'm coming after him I'm taking him back to court I want part of his lottery winnings I don't she does however want the alimony payments to come to a stop the only okay. thing that I would like to see is obviously termination of spousal support what was your first reaction I had already seen that somebody had purchased a ticket at that store and I thought there's no way it could be him and sure enough it was. I was shocked. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. You know, it's very rare to see such kind of a woman who does not want a cut of the money that the man has won. If you look at it in modern days at the moment, women would actually even go a step further to, stay, to, stay, to start accusing him of things he never did just to get a cut of it and get sympathy out of it, you know? Stating, no, he never did this, I endured this, so I need this money because I endured this and this and this. Things come out when a man gets money. So that's the thing in this case, you see. But this woman is just showing that not everyone is the same. I'm sure she's old school and the kind of woman that does not want anything to do with money. She's making her own money. And I think a lot of people should learn from her in the first place because she's doing fine for herself. Let's continue watching uh, what transpired after this now. Eileen says the lottery jackpot doesn't change the way she feels about Mike. Very noble woman. Marriage did not end on a happy note. Okay. Now that you have money, it doesn't mean that I'm, I would want to come back. Mike, I respect that. Way. $270 million does not make me appealing to her. That's what she said in the New York Post. And do you believe her? I don't care. I don't care. He's $200 million dollars richer. Me and I don't want her back, so. We asked divorce lawyer Kelly Chang Rickert for her take. He bought this ticket post the divorce several months after the divorce was finalized. He bought it with his separate money. He won its separate property and she has absolutely no right to it. Now check out this wild coincidence. That New Jersey convenience store where Mike bought the winning ticket, that's where he proposed to Eileen 15 years ago. That's just very crazy, yeah? Right in the same store. That is a crazy story. It is a crazy story. So he proposed in the same store, one at the moment, uh, marriage afterwards 
Later on, he won a lottery again in the same store. Probably used early money to, to make that ticket, you know? <laughs> but anyway, it's an interesting story. What do you think about this story? Do you think the man is entitled to give the woman something? Or he owes her nothing and shouldn't give her anything whatsoever? She seems like a very reasonable woman, you know? And if it was me, I would have given her something. Because she seems very reasonable. She doesn't care about the money and all that. She's making her own money and she wants to move on as she is moving on already. He seems to have moved on already, especially with the money now. He knows he can get... Uh, women with money you know how it is in the modern day with women and money now i showed you this story because i've got another story it's not about the old age it's about the kind of woman that we have so it depends with the kind of woman that you have and not about the age because here it seems as though because the woman is old and doesn't care about money that's the reason why this is not happening but let's see the next story here i'm sure you will like this story more this next story is about a moment people daydream about, hitting the lottery jackpot. First of all, what's an old woman going to do with $600,000? Already, that's a lot of money for her, and she's going to live the rest of her life comfortably with that. So why does she need to sue her grandson over that amount? Because if he makes that money, it's going to help him as he grows on, and he's going to, you know, have a jumpstart to life. But she wants to take part of that money. I know, I know such kind of people who want everything for themselves. This is very selfish. I think the woman is being very selfish. But I know you would have your different take and you let me know in the comment section what you think about that. Because I think it's being selfish to the fact that they got a 50-50 split and then their names were bought on the ticket, you know? So why is she complaining, stating that she bought the ticket? And it could be that she bought the ticket, but in the end, their names were bought there and they were supposed to have shared the money as it is. And there's no loss in sharing 500, 600, 600 million each. $600,000 each. That's a lot of money and they are going to do very well with that money, you know? So let's finish watching the video. Tonight we can tell you the chase is finally over. A family feud and legal battle over a $1.2 million chase the ace jackpot has been settled. CTV's Kyle Moore tonight with more on how a woman and her nephew have agreed to split the prize. 57-year-old Barbara Reddick and her nephew, 19-year-old Tyro McGinnis, arrived separately at the Port Hawkesbury Courthouse this morning. But after five hours of meeting behind closed doors together, the two came to a mutual agreement. The terms being that of the $611,319.50 at issue, Mr. McGinnis will receive $350,000 and Ms. Reddick will receive $261,319.50. Bringing Reddick's total winning... 800,000 from the amount. Wow, that's a lot. I'm taking them to court. I'm getting my lawyer tomorrow. The mood much different more than two months ago when Reddick and McGinnis arrived to collect the more than $1.2 million Marguerite Chase the Ace jackpot. I thought he saved on the ticket for good luck. Why did you do that? Because he's like a son to me. He was. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Money splits families, you know? Tickets, ...but says there was never any agreement to split the big prize. When they were given separate checks, the lawsuit was on. But today, those feelings changed, according to Reddick's lawyer. They are both satisfied with the terms of the settlement. It was reached mutually in order to avoid further court proceedings and to bring this matter to a final conclusion. So that is fantastic. In the end, they ended up splitting 800 million, then 300 or some had close 400, which is kind of very selfish if you look at it. So she got more than... Uh, more than 60% of the winnings, more than 70% of the winnings and gave him about 30%. And he was happy with it, you know, as a kid, you know, he's going to use that money to, it's a lot of money still on it. More than, one, close to $400 million, that's more $400,000, uh, that's a lot of money. Or so on. I know it's Canadian dollars, but uh, still it's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, I feel like these two women that, that I've showed you, both other women, one is very reasonable and the other one not reasonable. So it talks about the kind of woman that you find yourself with and not to the generation so it's about people and we have a lot of people in this generation that are just out for blood trying to you know to, to to gain over others so if it was in this generation i'm sure they would have dragged themselves each and here and there in the first story and gotten something out of it and you know like i said things don't usually work out for the man in most cases but i like the fact that in this case it worked out for both cases that they were able to settle the situation even though in the second situation the boy did not get as much as the woman, still things ended up safely. And I hope that the first, first man gave something to the ex-wife because she seems to be very reasonable and I would do the same as well. So let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Do you think that 
the first story was fair that the man should not give the woman anything or should give something because I really like that story. Second story as well, what do you think about the woman? Is she greedy or maybe she was right to state that because she's the one that bought the ticket, she gets the bigger amount. So thank you very much for watching. Kindly do like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to comment because the more you comment, the more I get recommended to other people and the more the channel grows. So we are growing as a gambit and all because of you. Thank you very much for that. So help your brother out by liking, sharing and commenting also. So thank you very much for watching. This is Maxwell with Z Gambit. I wish you a wonderful day, afternoon and evening. Bye.